Welcome to Lunchtime Coaching. Leonie, thank you for joining us today. And uh, for those who are going to be watching and uh, are sharing at the Lunchtime Coaching uh, videos, um, this is really purely just to add value and to share useful information, um, chatting to really awesome uh, people, sharing really awesome uh, stuff with us. Today we have um, Leonie with us, Leonie from uh, the Rain Tree Business Coaching Company. So Leonie, tell us more about you. I mean, <laughs> hello, Kevin, it's like, ah, la, 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 and on you. I'm good, Kevin, how are you today? I'm good, I'm good, I'm good. <laughs> awesome, awesome. Yeah, so Kevin, part of Raintree Business Coaching, I must say it still feels weird. It's, it's our new baby. It was literally, um, it was born last week. So um, the conversations were a little bit longer. Uh, I, uh, it's a collaboration with two other business coaches um, that I, I met. Yeah. Angela, my one business coach, Angela Healy, we started actually having the conversation last year already. Um, and seeing what are our challenges, what are the opportunities, who are our customers, uh, where are the challenges, um, and, to, and then kind of looked at opportunities to collaborate. Um, and then this year, we were joined by the beautiful, amazing, talented Vimbai Schwam. So you are for entry business coaching, and it is all about a business coaching and supporting leaders in business to really be the best um, that they can be and stepping into their power. Um, so yeah, I'm a business coach. I also train coaches, um, and now part of, of Raintree business coaching. Quite exciting. Tell us, tell us, um, why, why the collaboration? You know, kind of like collaboration's got that beautiful thing where if you put one brain on the table, you kind of get all the resources in the one brain, join another brain and join another brain, and you've got the best of all the worlds. So Angela, for example, has been coaching for close to 15 years. Um, so she has a wealth of, of, of coaching tools and experience. Um, Vimbai, um, yeah, Vimbai is, 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 a, is interesting. So she um, is a, a social economic developer, but she's also an international qualified um, yoga coach. Um, and then myself has been working in, in business for a very long time and then also um, added the, the coaching and, and training coaches um, to that. So when we put all of that together in the pot and, and mix it, it's just what comes out is just so much stronger to be able to serve our customers. We had, we had a workshop last year, last week where I had an idea and then Angela added some experience and, and Vimbai with the creative flair kind of just put the ribbon around it and tied it up very nicely to, to a really wholesome um, solution for, for our customers. So that's why the collaboration. And it's fun. You know, it's hard being by yourself always. So it's fun. Yeah. No, absolutely. I mean, I also believe in, you know, co-collaboration -coll really creates a beautiful moment um, of exponential thinking. You know, when, you, when you're doing what you're doing, it's great and it's, it's fantastic. But when you add a few elements from other people, other moments, other businesses, um, suddenly that co-collaboration just expands so exponentially. Mm -hmm. um, and that's, you know, I, that's one of my business models is to collaborate with as many people as I can. Um, because we all offer, you know, stuff uh, uniquely. Um, and it just, you know, it makes it so much more and so much more uh, effective when we do collaborate. So I, I think that's a really okay. fantastic idea. Um, so tell us, what is the focus of Raintree? So Raintree really has as the vision to empower business leaders, as I've mentioned. Um, but it is really about allowing them to step into their power um, as leaders to to lead their businesses to greatness. Um, you know, we find, and, and I've definitely experienced this over and over and over again um, when, when we do the um, coaching in, in, in the business world, is we get employed for our skill set. We're very good at doing something, right? And then we get promoted, and then suddenly we become this thing called a manager, and now we have to look after people. And that's not necessarily something that we've, that we've ever done or actually really good at. Um, so it brings so, so many more challenges um, around. Um, and, and we've recognized that it is around really looking at these people to support them and building them to become confident and strong and resilient in, the, in their leadership abilities to support, to support the long-term um, business sustainability, which is really what our country needs. Um, 
Yeah, so, so that's really the, the key focus here is, is, is supporting business leaders for sustainable business growth. And tell us, uh, uh, one of the questions I have here is um, a little bit about your online solution. What is that about? I forgot about that. That's a good question to ask. <laughs> it's an important one. <laughs> yeah, so, um, you know, if there's one thing that, that COVID kind of forced us into, it's digitization and, and you know, if, if you weren't aware of how important it is to start making the shift to that one, you most certainly do now. Um, I was looking at myself and Angela and I chatting last year saying, you know, it needs to be an online solution. Um, and I was fortunate that I, I was forced into that very uncomfortable zone quite a couple of years ago. I've been working with, with clients in New, in New York um, to, to go into the, the online platform or the, the online coaching room. We were chatting about the importance and how do we make it really interactive and how to ensure that it's still coaching because coaching is so empowering. Um, and, and I kind of in my mind go, okay, cool. So then we'll launch, launch that next year um, and we're busy, you know, building all these solutions and then COVID happened and, and guess what? We, we're all online now. Um, so it is about providing an online solution for customers. Um, more and more and more, and, I've, and I had a call the other day with um, with a group of coaches. We were talking about our experiences online, and how we believe that we don't think the the the, the coaching space necessarily is going to go back to face to face. It's just so valuable for clients to to pop online in their safe environment and have a very effective, quick uh, coaching conversation. Um, and then step back into what they need to do, especially when we work with leaders. And then more so what we started looking at is how do we provide a, a online group coaching solution yeah. where it's really about making coaching more accessible to people that don't necessarily in, in the past had that opportunity. So our young leaders, um, our middle management leaders that bring so much experience and wealth to the business and that are needed right now because we are in a space of constant change. We need their experience. We need their know-how. Um, but they don't necessarily know how to, how to step into that leadership role. Um, and we've got all of these other little things in the background and our hooks and our, and our buttons that are being pressed. Um, so providing a solution for businesses to, to make coaching accessible in a, in a group where they can collaborate themselves as well um, to really step up and, and start leading. So, yeah, this is where I'm stuck now, hey, Kevin. <laughs> so you mentioned, uh, you mentioned COVID forcing us uh, or, uh, around digitization. Do you think there's anything else um, that COVID has brought to the forefront for us? Yeah, I think, I think a, there's a lot of things, but something that's been standing out for me uh, personally, but what I'm definitely been hearing more and more and more from, from clients um, and, and chatting to other coaches as well is, is the people asking the question, so what's the point? Um, why am I here? What do I really want in my life, right? It's almost a bit of a, it gave us a bit of a pause. Um, and am I going to just storm back into work life and just do everything the way that I used to? Or actually, am I, am I looking at things slightly different? Um, so for me, it's really about the, the, the purpose question. Um, and then how do I create a world now that I can be fulfilled in? Um, yeah. And then very importantly, so, you know, how am I behaving um, to achieve this? So I definitely think for me, COVID brought that pause to just go, um, so what is really important to me and then what is my future going to look like and, and how do I make that happen and that for me really stands out currently yeah I mean I find exactly the same I think there's um, a lot of people from my coaching experience is that they are asking a bigger question you know suddenly mm -hmm. there's such an awareness about um, you know am I actually practically using my time and am I achieving what I really want to achieve with, with what I'm doing here. Um, mm. and a lot of people sort of need to um, break away from that. Um, and I've just released a, a, a nice um, uh, video recently that, that specifically speaks about I'm, I'm feeling stuck. Mm. Um, it's called the four magic questions. I don't know if you've seen it online, but it's, you know, it really formulates a beautiful way of, of wrapping your brain around answering some of your own questions because yeah. it's just that reframing that people really need. And, that, um, a lot of people are, are really struggling with, with, with feeling that way. But um, 
uh, do not uh, dwell with the past here. Because, <laughs> 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 so you, uh, you know, as, uh, with our conversations, I've noticed. Yeah. Right? <laughs> Um, right, so we have. <laughs> <laughs> you brought us a tool today to share. Um, do, does it link to what, what you're speaking about? Yeah, so I think what is important here is, 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 is that question, you know, what, what is important for me? Um, and people are asking it for various reasons. Um, I think I do want to mention that that you know, going back to the office space, and it is now, you know, apart from everybody queuing at Macro to, to go buy some, some um, substance. Um, the other thing that happened yesterday is, is a lot of people went back to work or didn't. Um, so people have been heavily affected and everybody differently. And it's important to remember that we need to be kind, whatever the situation, because a lot of people are asking that question because they, they don't have a job to go back to. You know, a lot of people were, were impacted financially. Um, they, they, yeah, the, the impact is, is, is very vast and very different, but there is a bit of a, not a bit, there is the question, so, so who am I in the future and how do I create a life where I can be fulfilled? Um, and, and it is about how do I now behave and what is, you know, how do I ensure that I achieve this. So, so the tool that I looked at today was about understanding our, our trigger points um, that gets us to, to behave differently from, from where we maybe would like to, to behave. Um, yeah. You know, one of the things that, that COVID gives us is the, is that collective threat. So, you, you know, we, we all are aware of the fight, fight, and freeze response and, and how that happens, you know, kind of the, the, the reptile brain that's being triggered by seeing the lion in the wood and it is it was programmed to protect us. So we go into fight, fight or freeze. Yeah. Um, and, and currently what is happening is, you know, we, we've got a collective tiger here. We've, we've got the, the, the lion called COVID. So everybody is more on edge. Um, as, as a collective, as a global collective, we, we're facing the enemy. So there is physical threat which means that this response can be triggered so much quicker. Yeah. Um, the other thing, and that's really what I want to speak to, um, going back to the office and, and creating the, the world that we want to live in, is that the reptile brain cannot discern between that physical threat and the emotional threat. The response is the same. Yeah. So let's look quickly at the response. So there's the fight, flight, freeze, and there's a new one called form. So we all know fight, you know, yeah. where we start um, self-defense and start fighting. Um, the, the flight is just, you know, just get out of the room as quickly as possible. The freeze, which is where I go like, oh, um, fauness, let's start, you know, saving everybody else in just in, in doing something. So what happens here, obviously, is, you know, we see the threat, um, the, the, the pupils dilate, the, the heart rate speeds up um, because all the oxygen gets carried through to, to our hands and to our feet. So it feels like blood rushing. Um, and the reason I'm mentioning this is, is the very first step here is to become very physically aware how you respond when you go here. Yes. And this supports us in, in recognizing when this happens. Because for 90 seconds, it is impossible to think logical because you don't have any blood and oxygen in your brain. It's all sitting here in your hands on your feet because you're either ready to fight or you, you know, ready to run away. Yeah. So it is important to just recognize this as, as a first level. The second level is to understand what are these trigger points. And now I'm not speaking about the coronavirus that we're all fa facing um, and the physical threats. I'm speaking about the emotional threats. Um, and, and what we call this is, is our four core identities. These are buttons that we all have. Um, when someone presses this but button, we go into that fight, fight, freeze, or form response. Yeah. And the first one is competence. So we've got competence, goodness, value, and fairness. And I want to speak a little bit more in understanding what this looks like, how we respond, and how we can get ourselves out of this response so we can start behaving differently um, to be able to, to live in this world that we want to create for ourselves. Yeah. So, uh, carry on, carry on. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> mm. 
Okay, so, so competence, um, this one we, we see a lot. Yeah. Right. It is where someone or something challenges your competence. And oh my goodness, were we challenged um, with, with this one where, you know, so many people were in, in a work environment where they, they're competent at what they do, but suddenly, you know, get ripped, ripped out of the very comfortable familiar work environment and now having to do this at home. You know, Kevin, I don't know if, I don't know if you come from the workforce, but I used to be permanently employed and I very much remember when um, I had to step into the shoes of now being an entrepreneur. Um, and, and, you know, someone told me, Leonie, you know, when you start working for yourself, it's very important to get up at a certain time and get dressed. You know, you, you, can't, you can't sit and work in your pajamas. <laughs> so I remember, you know, getting up and getting ready and sitting around my machine, but I had no idea what I was supposed to be doing. And I didn't have the competence in the routine yet as to how do I structure my work day. What is this? And I felt so uncomfortable. It was really just a terrible, and it just forced me to freeze. I couldn't get anything done. And I think a lot of people experience something similar where, you know, we ripped out of the, the norm and thrown into this unpredictable space of we don't kind of, you know, we need to sink or swim, make it happen. Yeah. So it's, a, it's, it's important to recognize when, when your competence is, is being challenged that you're going to go into fight, fight, freeze, or fall. It's, yeah. it's natural. Um, and what that sounds like, and to help you to recognize it, is, is um, where people start, you know, they, they start rejection, rejecting any ideas, anything that's new, any positivity. Um, I, I saw a lot of this in happening in, in one of my clients early on in COVID. They were in a, uh, they had, they have, I guess it's changed now, but they had a promo company who did yeah. uh, branded collateral. Now you can imagine that business is dead in water, right? Mm. Um, and it was a it was a partnership, um, and and the one partner was here where the, where the competence was. Oh my goodness, we've now worked so hard and getting everything ready, and now we need to change everything. I don't know what to do next. And what it sounded like was this loud complete complaining and just shooting off any ideas that were put on the table. Um, and it was just anger and demanding justifications and explanations. Um, it was really a negative response. And when we started working at this, we, we, we at a first level looked at, okay, so this is where we are now. And then looking at what is in our control and what is outside of the control, letting go of the stuff that's outside of her control and then looking at the stuff that was in her control and immediately she started getting calmer and then we were able to identify to say right what are the things that you that you're not competent in doing because they were then venturing into a whole new area of having to provide branded PPE, um, PPE to, to all of their clients and their certification it was a whole lot of stuff so there was a list of who could she speak to um, what does she need to go and research to get knowledge and information so that she, she could feel competent again and yeah. to be able to step back into to the world. Um, and then she started developing structures for herself um, and it really led to, to, to positive conversations and then really, you know, saving a sinking ship. Um, their business are doing very strong now. Obviously, they're doing it day by day and, and short-term strategies, uh, week by week. Um, but there's a solid plan. Sorry, I just want to ask, don't, don't mm. you think it also lends itself to that whole um, self-identification? Uh, self because the moment your competence is in question, suddenly how you identify as, uh, as a competent human being or competent yes. uh, a business owner, you know, suddenly my identity of who I am and who, how I show up on a, on a day-to-day -day basis, yes. you know, it's completely in question. So okay. it's, it's an obvious um, sort of threat mode that I go into. And I think Absolutely. that's you know, touching on what you're saying. I think there's a lot of people currently sitting in that situation where they, mm. They, they've identified with their day-to-day -day routine, their habit-formed behavior, their, the way that they usually do life. And suddenly, you know, they have this threat, this COVID, this new normal that we've now all just have to adjust to. And my competence level has shot out the window because suddenly I'm going, well, this is not how I do life. 
And I think that's, that really speaks to what you're saying. It's, you know, and, and people's identity sometimes get into to, uh, complete um, question um, of themselves and how, how they, act, you know, how to even move past that. So I think it's, it's a beautiful point um, that, you know, um, maybe some people Absolutely. don't feel competent. They, they, they actually just don't feel like they know what the hell to do. You t you're spot on because that's why we call it the four core identities, right? And if you look at, you know, so that so there's a lot that's not going back to the office, and now I have to deal with all of these unknowns, and I have to step into this uncomfortable space where I, it looks like I don't know what I'm doing because actually I don't know what the hell I'm doing. Yeah. You know, I'm just I'm just looking at the way that that my daughter's school has been having to deal with things. Currently, she's part of the the great grade seven group that is going back to school and now we're not going back to school and then we're going back to schools and now we're not going back to school and in between these poor people they they're trying to to write exams and now we're writing exam at school and oh no we, 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 we're doing it online again but they had to deal with the unknown and come with short-term solutions plan a b and c and then something changes which means we now need to look at plan f z and and y and it's it's just had to dealing with this unknown and being able to go right so this plan is now out the window it doesn't work anymore what yeah. else can we do and not go into this place of oh my goodness i don't know how to do this and now everybody is wrong except me yeah it's, um yeah but so speak, speak to us about the goodness um, um tell us more about the, how that is your how do you identify to that so goodness um speaks to in our essence again it speaks to, to to that identity right where we we identify with being the good person so i think every single small business owner probably went here not probably went here yeah. um, and even even bigger businesses where we go you know i care about my staff i care about my people i care about my my, my clients um but oh my goodness i cannot pay salaries at the end of the month um, I, I, I don't know how I'm going to survive and how do I take care of, of, of my staff. Um, and, and when we go, when that one is triggered, we so easily go into the place of, you know, putting the, the entire world on, on, on our shoulders and feeling sorry for ourselves and worrying about everybody else and the consequences, right? So we so externally focus on, oh my goodness, and now this is happening and this is happening and I can't apply for this fund and I can't apply for that fund and, and, and my, my, my customers can't pay me because they're in the same situation. You know, it's this big spiral and we just feel completely overwhelmed. Um, and again, fight, fight, freeze or fall, you know, this is where we go. We, um, I'm, Angela, my business partner, told the story where she was working with one, with one of her clients that were that worked so solidly in the stuck in the space here where she can buy, um, pay salaries at the end of the month. Um, and the conversation then went into starting to focus on the bigger big picture and start looking at a kind of a best solution for all, right? And instead of placing all this responsibility on the shoulder, let's look at how you can empower your staff to start to, 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 um, to get them involved in the process and collab collab uh, collaboratively come up with, with solutions. Yeah. So what she then did was that she had conversations with the staff saying, right, guys, here's the, here's the problem, right? We, we're not getting in new business. I don't know how to pay salaries. How can we brainstorm together um, and come to, to a place where you guys are empowered to also contribute to your own salaries? Um, and, and we all save this sinking ship. Yeah. Um, and it was so amazing where they came up then with a solution where um, everybody then went out to do some new business de development. There was um, some commission added to it. Um, so suddenly, instead of her carrying all the weight on her shoulder, she had a team that was motivated, inspired, that felt empowered, that went stuck in a, in a solution where they had no power over whether they were getting salaries or not. And her goodness was restored. So she was calm and focused again, and she was able to make difficult decisions. Um, it was empathetic. Yes, it was fair and it was consistent and it was business and logic. Um, and yeah. I think from that perspective, I think that's, you know, what, what businesses need today is maybe that's maybe one of the approaches that 
that all businesses should start taking because it becomes collaborative. It becomes, um, let me get your buy-in. Let me get you on board with how we're going to do this together. And it also, you know, it sort of gets, uh, it creates a sense of certainty for the staff. Um, Absolutely. You know, the moment there's uncertainty, everyone starts freaking out. Um, but if you if you collaborate that way and you and you sort of go okay guys let's have this conversation it's a difficult conversation and um, let's create a certain amount of certainty and this is how we're going to work together I think also you know um, business owners specifically need to know or need to have the permission that they don't have all the answers yeah you know I, I just don't know and what it, to do. And and, and and it's so nicely what you're saying here links so nicely to you to to the third one which is your value and your worth so when you start then having that conversation with your staff you are you are recognizing their value and their worth yeah. right um exactly. i had a beautiful you just like you know as you were saying this i remember this this at the beginning of COVID. i had a conversation with she um she's kind of middle middle management in an in in operational sector of, of the business yeah. And she was so stuck in this place of her her value button being pressed, right? She, for her to really add value to the business, she needed people to come to the office because what the, that was part of a role, operational level, taking all the, the documentation and, and quite a critical role in the business. But with people not coming to the office, there was absolutely no space for her. Um, and she went into, and this is where we go, it's a, it's a nasty place, but we go into this complete victim mentality where we feel so pathetic and so weak. Um, yeah. And now we're looking at the bosses to recognize us and, oh my gosh, can't they see how hard I'm working and no one is thinking about me um, and I'm complaining um, and I'm feeling sorry for myself. Mm. Um, you know, and it's completely paralyzing being in this place. Um, just this yeah. loud, loud complaining. And we've seen this. Um, and it was interesting, you know, I caught her just the right time um, and she was complaining about no one's thinking of her and no one is noticing her. And we started having a conversation where I just asked her, you know, kind of, you know, how long have you been at the business? And she's been there for quite significant time. Um, so I said, oh my gosh, are you, you, you know, the, the operational infrastructure of the business very well. She goes, oh yeah. And we started having a conversation and what a you know, going online, because all business was going online at that point in time, I said, you know, what are the potential pitfalls? And what are the potential solutions that you see? And through having that conversation, what she realized was that she had, she had such a valuable part in the business where she's got experience in her sector that none of the senior management people had because she's in operations. Yeah. And instead um, of having a conversation with her, with her manager to say, you know, woe is me and no one cares about me. It was, listen, there's potentially, these are the potential pitfalls um, in, in my section and these are the potential solutions. Um, and then she became solution orientated. It was a positive, constructive conversation. They started innovating and she was very much part of that process and so valuable to the process. Um, and that's so important that, that business owners, you know, senior leaders in business realize that, that you know, the, the weight of the world is not on their, on their shoulders. We can't do this alone because yeah. innovation in, in this current time needs to happen continuously because we, we're stepping into the unknown. Um, and it's, it's important to realize that, that we can then utilize the value of our staff, the, the knowledge, the expertise, the experience to utilize that um, in, in surviving and building, the, building our businesses and changing and innovating as, as we have to. And then obviously then this, this leads to fairness and how, how do you fit fairness into the, the equation? Look, I think we all had the fairness button pressed eh? because nothing about COVID is fair. Let's just be honest. It's like, wow. It's completely unfair. <laughs> <laughs> wow. We know, yeah, not, I, I said to someone, like, I didn't sign up in my life to, to, to face some global epidemic. What the hell? You know, that's the stuff that we read in history books. Um, and now no, we're living it. Um, but, but the fact of the matter is that, that we need to understand, you know, what happens. You know, just think about it. If you think about all the things that are unfair and, and what's going wrong, um, and when you just put your focus on all of this unfairness and you start complaining about it and gosh, you know, if I can be blunt, South Africa is such a complaining <laughs> nation. We like, 
Oh my gosh, you know, if it's not the potholes, then it's, ugh, I don't even want to go there. But it's, 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 and it's so easy to fall into this, this hook of having a conversation about someone and need to complain about something because something is unfair. But just notice for yourself if you get hooked into that conversation and start putting your focus on that conversation, you know, how does that help you to build the future that you want to live in? We're again reawakening to going, all right, so the situation is unfair. Nothing about COVID is fair. But what are the things that are within my power, right? And what are the things that I can put in my uh, place for myself? Where are my boundaries? How am I going to treat myself fairly? How am I going to look after myself? We become calmer. We start looking at what are the things that we say yes to? What are the things that we say no to? Um, and we create that personal structure and boundary. Um, to be able to build the future that we want to live in. Um, yeah. And that's so important. So again, you know, it, it's just all about mindset. Yeah, I mean, what comes to mind when you speak about it like that, from, from my perspective, from a like brain language perspective, it's about your reticular activation system, your, your RAS. Mm. And the moment you, you know, because you say, how do we focus on what I'm in control of? Uh, and the moment you bring your reticular activation system back into the moment of this is my focus and y y your brain is designed, you know, your brain is designed to focus on whatever you decide to focus on, so find supporting evidence of what you're focusing on yeah. and to keep you safe, you know. So, uh, and I, I also think that, you know, people have a misconception about uh, uh, focusing on self uh, as a selfish thing. And it's not really. You know, the moment you get back to focusing like where, where am I and what am I doing and how do I show up? You know, you start actually honing in on, on self and it's, it really leads to a lot more um, enabling behavior. Absolutely. So, I, yeah. I mean, we don't have a whole bunch of time. So um, recap this for us so we can just, um, if we are a business owner, you're struggling, how do, we, how do I just take away the, the, the nuggets from today's conversation? So very briefly, it's understanding that we are in a time where we are triggered, right? We, we are living in that fight, flight, freeze, respond mode and being aware of that, being very physically aware of what does that feel like in your body when it happens for you so that you can catch yourself. Mm -hmm. And remember, it takes 90 seconds for, for, for the blood to return back to the head where you can start thinking logically and then going recognizing saying all right what has happened here what is the button that was pressed for, my, for me was it my competence was it my value was it my goodness and was it my fairness um, and then getting back into the tools to say right if it was my competence what are the structures that I need to put in place how do I get back to a place where I, I can be confident and, and competent again you know I need to go learn something need to, do I need to ask for help how can I become competent again um, and having open conversations around it if it was my value back button that was pressed right yeah. see am I stuck here in this victim mentality am I feeling very sorry for myself remind myself of my true value you know I often had to go the stepping back into the world of entrepreneurship we're not back stepping into the world of entrepreneurship I'm like oh my goodness you have no, no idea what you're stepping into but it's remembering what is the value what is everything that you have with you what is your worth yeah. um, and how can you bring that to your situation instead of feeling sorry for yourself and being honest with yourself so that you can start being positive um, and having innovative converse, uh, positive conversations again. If it was your goodness, are you trying to carry the whole world on your shoulders? Mm. How do, can we look at the bigger picture? Right? Sometimes there's no such thing as the, the good, right decision. Um, often what we what we're having to face here is very difficult, but how can we create a best scenario for all? Um, and again, how can we share that responsibility? And, and, when the, and when the fairness button is being pressed, um, it, is, it is really looking at what are the boundaries, letting go of the stuff that's outside of your control. What are the boundaries that you need to put in place for yourself? What do you say yes to? What do you say no to? And how can you create uh, fairness for yourself? How do you treat yourself fairly? Um, and just become aware of this, you know, and, and, and this stuff given, as, as you know, it's, it's like going to the gym. You, you're going to have to train that muscle. 
because you're dealing with habits um, and not being hard for yourself and being kind. Yeah, I think a lot of people, you know, I think what 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 really resonates with me and, you know, being out and dealing with people and helping and uh, sharing information, it's really, people are really struggling, you know, and, um, and there's no magic little wand that kind of goes, okay, we'll do this and that's going to be fine. Um, so, you know, if that's not the case, then what is the, what is the answer? And the only answer that, that keeps coming back to my mind is, well, I need to change. If things there needs to change, things outside needs to change, things in my environment, things in the world, that means I need to change. And the more I can really fo start focusing on what I'm doing and how I'm doing and how I'm responding to this environment, um, then I'm enabling myself on a date and it really is a day-to-day -day strategy that you it's really a day-to-day -day strategy yeah we have to be so agile currently because what happened what's working today is not necessarily going to work tomorrow exactly and and yeah. because of the uncertainty the six months from now people are going well i don't know what that looks like what does that even mm -hmm. mean right so yeah. it is maybe it's a week to week or a day to day but it definitely isn't you know long term right now um but i think um Thank you. I, I really appreciate you sharing this with me. That's really such an awesome conversation to have. You're so Tell welcome. Us, you know, mm -hmm. when, when do we get hold of, uh, of you guys and where can we find more information about you? <laughs> so like I said, Rainfree was birthed last week. So <laughs> at this point in time, I think even the best would be uh, on, my, on my email for now. Um, okay. So it's leonie.kutsi68 at gmail.com. We are frantically you know, building all the other things that needs to happen. Um, yeah. But yeah, email email is best. Pop me a little email. We'll connect um, and see how we can can support. And I'll also I, I'll also hashtag and put all the details in um, the um, sharing of uh, the, the the information. So it will be in the description below. Um, but thank you, thank you for joining us. Thank you for joining us on lunchtime coaching. We haven't even had time to discuss the the Kibler Ross uh, change curve. So maybe you're going to have to come back and we, we do that. <laughs> There's so many tools currently that we're using, you know. <laughs> but absolutely, I'd love to. Thank you. And thank you to you, Kevin. I mean, I, I absolutely love what you're doing here. Um, you know, thank you. You just put as much as possible help out, out there currently. And that's, you know, that's what we're all about. So and thank that's you. What do. That's, what the, that's our business, right? <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Thank you so much. I'll talk to you soon. Have a awesome. wonderful day. You Cheers. too. Thanks, Kevin. Bye. Bye.